from anywhere. I have been having a great time reading First Kings about Elisha and you know, I would say a majority of believers mm -hmm. are familiar with the story of Elisha, that he was a mighty prophet of God and he did some crazy stuff and um, God had him do amazing miracles. And, uh, but this week, what really is just, I can't shake is that the part where, you know, Elisha had just challenged the prophets of Baal to a showdown you know, he had kind of disappeared and um, Ahab had been looking for him and couldn't find him. And, you know, finally he showed up and said, here I am. You know, it's time for you to decide who you're going to worship. Are you going to worship the true God? Or are you going to worship your, your devils and your demons and your false idols? And so at that point he says, okay, get all your false prophets together and your, you know, and let's have a showdown. And so they build a big pile of wood and, you know, um, put water around it, put a trench around it, and then said, okay, let's see if your gods can call down fire from heaven and lap it all up, burn it all up. And long story short, it's not that long, but I talked too much, is, you know, they cried and they danced and they cut themselves and because they would like offer their blood and be crazy to their gods to see if their gods would answer them. And it said, e Elisha even made fun of them. I know, I know. He was That's like, funny. Oh, maybe he can't hear you. Yeah. Maybe he's sleeping, you know? So, you know, he's kind of having a good time <laughs> at their expense. And then when Elisha called down, called out to God, God just sent fire down from heaven and burnt everything up, including all the water that was in the trench. And um, soon thereafter, when Jezebel, Ahab's wife, finds out, she goes, make the gods ever deal with me ever so severely if I don't have you dead by tomorrow this time. And what's so weird is after all the things that the Lord had done in and through Elijah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it girl. says immediately he was afraid and fled for his life immediately. So it's like you have this radical encounter with God and God knows I've had radical he, encounters yeah. with God. And he I've, asked the Lord to take his life. Remember? Yeah, he's like, I don't want to live anymore. Yep. And so he's like, take my life. I don't want to live. Oh my gosh. You know, and it's like, how often has the Lord done some amazing stuff in our lives? And we're on the top of the world one minute. And then something just comes our way that just knocks us off our game, you know, knocks us out like onto our butt, you know, and we're just like, God, oh my gosh. And we, it's like, we so quickly forget who God is and what he's done. And for us, the, the most important thing that we can cling to and have full confidence and gain strength and encouragement from is the fact that Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He died for us and he rose again because sin and death could not hold him. And so everything else in this world is nothing compared to that. Like we have eternal life in him. We have eternal hope in him. If we have nothing in this world and still have him, we have more than most, right? And that's a hard thing to grab. I know I struggle. I get, I look at my finances or I look at, you know, my lack of health, you know, meaning my lack of fitness and how, you know, I need to get in better shape and I need to be healthier, et cetera, et so on. Yeah. But going back to what Jackie was saying too, you know, sometimes, and I heard Tony Evans talking about this, that sometimes God lets things happen to you to yeah. see what you're going to do at that moment, to see if you're going to cling to him. If you're going to run for the woods all desperate and do things that you're not supposed to be doing. So like he was talking about last week, he said about keep that grace inside of you despite of where you are in life. Like Jackie said, one minute you could be on top of the world. The next minute everything crumbles. So it's like... What do we cling to? What are you doing? Is God actually... Is he doing that to you? Is he what, in control or yeah, is he allowing it? He might be allowing it. Ask that to yourself and what are you going to do? Right. And so in this particular situation... It, it's like, seriously, you need to refresh your memory because I know the stories. I know Elijah, but just getting this refreshed and you get fresh manna. When you get in the word again and again, God gives you fresh manna, meaning he gives you fresh revelation, fresh food to nourish your spirit, right? And so in this case, Elijah's like laying on the ground. He's just frustrated and whining. I don't want to live, blah, blah, blah. God says, have some food. <laughs> so he eats and he rests and he lays there and he's like, God says, here, have some more food. 
you're going to need it for your journey. So he eats the food and then he gets up and it says he walks 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> like walks 40 days and 40 nights. He goes like some serious distance. He was actually a runner. When you read the Bible in yeah, different he languages. Yeah, in, in he, this it said he walked this Yeah, time. but when you translate that from different languages, from Greek to uh, uh, English, what I learned is he's, he's actually running, not really walking. So he was a runner. Yeah. And um, so then he gets to his destination and then <laughs> God says, Elijah, what are you doing here? <laughs> and Elijah's like, oh, I'm zealous for you and I've... Your people have gone astray and they're, they've killed all the prophets and, and he's all frustrated. And so he lays down and God tells him to go to the cliff and stand there and listen. He listens and doesn't hear anything. He sees a fire, has a earthquake, um, uh, earthquake, fire, wind, you know, and then it says there was a still small voice and Elijah went back and listened again. And the whisper was like, Elisha, why are you here? Like, I don't know about you, but this makes me laugh. And so Elisha's like, I'm so zealous for you and I've been faithful to you and your people have gone away and they're forsaking you and they're going after our idols and they're killing all the prophets. And he like rants and, you know, fusses and lets out all his frustration. And God's like, okay. He's like, all right, Elijah, good. Okay. It's like kind of like I'm interjecting what I'm thinking, but it's like God let him run away and like, have his little temper tantrum, you know, get frustrated, pout. And then, he, then he's like, what are you doing here? And then, so he listens to him a couple times when he gives him his whole diatribe. And then God says, okay, now I need you to go back to where you came from and finish business. I need you to anoint these Kings. I need you to anoint this guy and anoint this guy. I need you to anoint Elisha, your, uh, you know, successor. Um, and it's like, he's like, okay, I just see him going, okay, you had your you ran away. You had, I gave you your space. I let you, I knew you were going to run away and freak out, but it's time to go back and do what you need to do. Right. And so Orlando can testify. I get kind of tired and I, I get frustrated, you know, and I'm like, babe, we need more business or I need more rest or I need to write more. And Oh, I got to do my school. And what do you do? I tell her just keep out of it. Be still. You gotta take be, still. I, I to be, I be still. Be still. Be still. My soul. We cannot really, we will never be productive and do everything we have to do. And we're we reacting distracted. and distracting and keeping our spirit aligned with the Lord's. And if you read throughout the Bible, you know, Jesus was always like steady. He was <coughs> steady, had a steady hand in everything he did because he knew he was, you know, God's son. So that's saying, that's what I keep telling people, not only you, like just. Remain steady. Take a step back. When you take a step back, you're going to be more effective. You cannot be reactive to things that happen. Just have faith in the Lord. Take a step back. And when, you, when you're going to go to work, go to work with everything you have. He has given you the wisdom. Give it all you have. Everything. Don't leave anything behind. Don't leave like Folgers until the last drop. Just go do it. Do it and do it and do it. Well, and when Orlando was talking, you know, the fact is, and I, we, we hear this and we hear this, but we really need to um, apprehend it and take it in, inculcate it into our inner being, which is we work from a place of rest, mm -hmm. right? We no longer live. We have died. It's Christ in me doing the will of the Father and doing the work through me. So I, I don't need to strive. Do I have to work hard sometimes? Do I have to really push through absolutely but it's from a place of abiding and resting in Christ and knowing that it is he who gives me the strength it is he who is calling me it is he who is doing the will and um, I am the hands and feet right and I am the revelation of his goodness and his will and his purposes right so I was reminded this week you know through all this that I'm tired I've got a lot of work going on and you know we, we have a lot to manage but what are we doing this weekend what are we doing this week? We're trying not to work. Right. We did a little bit of work this morning. But I wasn't done yet. So what I was convicted of. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. What I was convicted of is in spite of all this stuff going on in the world, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of all the challenges in my juggling my schedule and my family, God keeps saying, 
do what I called you to do. You have things that I've called you to do. Yes, this is all going on. Yes, people are acting crazy. Yes, there's chaos. Yes, there are people coming after the, the, the believers, the Christians, and coming after them and killing them and bad-mouthing them and whatever. But you need to stay focused. You need to still do what I've called you to do, which is write your books, um, serve those in real estate that I call you to serve, take care of your family, take care of your pastors, that I've uh, connected you with and the body that I've connected you with and be an encouragement, be a light, wash feet, serve others. Don't be worried about what you're going to get, what you're going to do, what, no, just do what I've called you to do and everything will unfold from there. And so as Orlando was saying this weekend for Father's Day weekend, we are not working and now you can talk. Oh, okay, cool. So, <laughs> so we thought I said we're not going to work, but we end up working for a little bit, very, very briefly. And then Jax, our son. Pastor Jax. Pastor Jax. Wait, no, wait, can I tell him? You're Pastor Jax. What, what did you say? Um, and then when I was taking a shower, um, and I, I was in the middle of the shower, I said, Hey, Poppy, I thought you guys weren't going to do work. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, then, and then he said, Well, we're just going to do a little bit. Okay. Okay, Pastor Jax, what are the orders today, sweetheart? What are your orders today? Oh, what? you have them. I got them right but here. But you know them. You can tell them to us. Remember what the orders were? Uh, Goodwill? Jax, yes, Lord. Um, you shall preach to the whole world and have goodwill. Yes, Lord, in your name, amen. Amen. So, so yes, Lord. Can I talk now? Um, so, we're doing... um. The, the parents are going to do a devotional for you guys. Yep. Yep. We're going to put, we're all going to work together to make it a devotional for um, boys and men and probably another one for young girls okay. and women. So um, stay tuned. Bless you.